This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Whenever you think of Nurgle and Chaos Space Marines, the Death Guard are likely to be the ones that spring to mind. There are of course the poster boys for Papa Nurgle, and their distended stomachs, oozing weapons and pockmark armour indicate this. But not every servant of Nurgle is a member of the Death Guard. There are of course other warbands who throw in their lot with the Lord of Decay and do not belong to the Death Guard Legion. And this is something that I've always wanted to explore, but I've never had the right angle. That was until Evil Anno left me the comment, I would love to see a Plague Marine based around Plague Rats. At that point, everything clicked into place and I knew what to do. I'm Pete the Wargamer and in this video, I'll be showing you how to kitbash a Terminator Lord of the Plague Tide Warband. I'll be giving this conversion a difficulty rating of 3 dead animal bits out of 5. There is no sculpting involved, but there are a fair few parts that need to be sourced from various kits, as well as a little scratch building involved too. The Chaos Terminator set is a really nice kit. It has much better scaling than its loyalist counterparts, and the detailing and options are great too, so this will serve as the basis for my Lord of the Plague Tide. This model would really lean heavily into the vermin aspect of the warband, and so I chose one torso in particular, the one with the large amount of fur around the waist. This matted mass of hair would look great as a jumble of rat pelts. So I began by removing all the parts required to build the torso and legs before cleaning them of any mold lines and sprue taps. Once removed, I could assemble this together to create the basis for the rest of the conversion. The first area of modification was the left arm. The Plague Tide's arrival on a planet is preceded by hordes of plague-carrying rats, which lay waste to food stores while spreading their deadly pathogens, softening up any defense before the warband arrives. To show this control over these rats, I wanted the arm to be held slightly aloft and with an open hand, as if the Lord is summoning forth his own rat swarm. This would be achieved with a combination of a Chaos Terminator Bolter Arm and an open hand from a Grey Knight Terminator. And don't worry, the irony of using a Grey Knight parts alongside Chaos parts wasn't lost on me. To combine these two parts, I first need to remove the Bolter Hand from the arm. I used clippers, making sure to only remove the hand and not to damage the Van Brace as I did so. Once the cut was made, I used my knife to clean things up and to further remove any chunks of plastic that I missed with the clippers. After a quick comparison between the hand and the arm, I could see that a few further tweaks were needed to the wrist joints on both the hand and the forearm. I made a series of small adjustments here, making sure to make frequent comparisons as I did so. This just helped to ensure that I wasn't going too far with the cuts or making them in the wrong places. Once I was happy with how the hand was lining up against the forearm, I bought in my glue and made things permanent. With the hand attached, the rest of the arm was then glued to the torso. By slightly angling the arm upwards, this created the exact pose that I was looking to recreate. As well as having the whole rat aesthetic, I also imagined the Plague Tide featuring crude but vicious looking armour and weapons. The regular sword from within the Terminator kit was a little too well made and didn't really fit in the style that I was looking to create. So instead, I looked towards the Corvus Cabal set from the Age of Sigmar and grabbed myself a torso that was carrying a large two-handed blade. This had that raw aspect that I wanted and also was the perfect size, but it first needed to be removed from the torso. This was achieved by first clipping away the pole that overlapped the blade. I removed as much as I could with the clippers, but I then needed to reconstruct the shape of the blade by using some more precise cuts with my knife. With the covered section of the blade rebuilt, I could then remove it from the handle. As I wanted a precise cut here, I chose to use my knife. The component was only thin, so the knife sliced through cleanly and easily. But I did make a few small trims afterwards, just to help flatten out the base of the blade. Similarly, I then cut away the sword from above the fist of the Terminator arm. I also did this with a knife, but the tool that I used here didn't matter if you weren't bothered about retaining the blade. After removal, I then cleaned up the area around the thumb and index finger. With both the new blade and arm prepared, I could begin the process of joining them, but as the size of the contact point is tiny in relation to the size of the component, just gluing here wouldn't quite cut it. So of course, I needed to grab 
my pin vise. With this trusty tool, I first began by drilling a 1mm diameter hole into the base of the sword. The blade had a cylindrical shape at the bottom, and I drilled all the way into this, taking care not to drill out of the other end. I then repeated this, but into the hand. I drilled directly down, just a few millimeters, aiming the drill bit into the spot between the palm, thumb, and index finger. With the holes drilled, I now had somewhere to insert the pin that would help to add some strength to the bond. With some 1mm thick steel florist wire, I superglued one end into the sword, gave it a few moments to firm up, and then clipped away the excess so that only a few millimeters were left protruding. More superglue was added and the sword was then inserted into the hole, completing the bond and creating a much stronger fixing. With the right arm prepared, I moved onto the shoulder pad. I chose one of the pads from the Chaos Terminator kit, particularly one which also featured fur and had a plain surface. This pad was then glued to the arm and given plenty of time to fully dry before I moved on to the next step. To continue with the crude aesthetic that I had started with the sword, I wanted to add some extra detailing to the armor. Fortunately, creating something that looks like it was roughly patched onto the armor was pretty simple to scratch build. I began with some plastic card, roughly around a millimeter in thickness. I cut out a rectangle of roughly four millimeters in width and then clipped out a series of squares. These didn't need to be completely uniform. In fact, having them irregularly sized added to the effect. To further bump up the primitive nature of the plates, I then used my knife to scrape away corners and some of the hard edges to further increase the irregularity between the plates. Once I'd prepared a bunch of these, I then glued them to the shoulder pad with some plastic glue. These were attached in a haphazard nature. I overlapped a few and rotated a couple until I had the entirety of the pad covered by a series of unevenly positioned plates. While the plastic glue was holding the plates in place, I wanted them to have a crudely bolted on appearance. This was achieved with some one millimeter diameter plastic rod. I superglued one end of the rod onto the rough center point of the plate. I use super glue here because it dries much faster than plastic glue, so it makes this process much easier. Once the glue had dried, I then cut it down to only a few millimeters using my clippers. The result was that of the metal rebar impaling each of the plates and fixing them to the shoulder. This process was repeated across all of the other panels. Finally, I was left with the finished shoulder pad. With this work completed, I could then attach the arm to the torso and then glue the right shoulder pad onto the model. Once again, I chose one of the pads that had a small patch of fur attached to them. I then repeated this process with a trio of roughly rounded discs arranged in a pyramid shape. These were attached to the chest to create the three circle symbol of Nurgle. After completing this icon, I felt that the additional armor was a little too weighted to just the right hand side of the body. So to remedy this, I added a couple of extra square plates to the lower left leg, which completed the armor. Now that my Terminator Lord had both of his arms, I now needed to choose a head. As I was leaning into the whole Rat Plague aspect with this warband, the most obvious style would be the beaked mask of medieval plague doctors. Building one of these would prove surprisingly simple too. I began with another component taken from the Corvus Cabal kit and a hooded head from the Death Guard Death Shroud Terminators kit. This exact head wasn't required, but I felt that the hood complemented the style nicely. However, attaching this head as it came from the kit wouldn't be possible, so after a quick comparison I started trimming. I used my clippers to remove some of the protruding horns and also trim back some of the bulk at the back of the head. This was further reduced by some more precise cuts made with a knife. I made frequent comparisons during this process in order to adjust where and by how much I needed to cut. Once I was happy with how the head was fitting into the Terminator's torso, I moved on to attaching the bird beak. I did my initial comparison and then started the adjustment. The small section of skull was the first thing to go. It was removed by clippers so that just the beak remained. This was followed by some flattening out of the back end of the beak. Finally, I clipped the slightly peaked face plate of the Death Shroud helmet to create a flatter surface. Once I was happy that the two parts were lining up nicely, I glued the beak to the head and then attached the head to the torso, completing the Plague Doctor look. Normally in my conversion guides, I tend to skip over the basic part. 
these are often quite a personal choice and I don't tend to have much of a bearing on the conversion itself. However, a big part of the Plague Tide are the hordes of rats that precede and accompany the warband, and this is something that I wanted to represent on the model. But to do this, I first needed to map my lord onto a slightly raised piece of scenery. I grabbed a piece of 40k scatter terrain and compared it against my 40mm base. The scenery was much too large, so I had to cut it down to size. Due to how thick the part was, I opted to use my saw to cut away part of the panel before cleaning up the edge. I removed a chunk that was the right size and shape to fit nicely onto a 40mm base. But I also wanted something that would also be flat enough for the Terminator Lord to stand upon. With a lump of rubble removed, I compared this against the base and then brought in the Lord. This was just to make sure that I could place the miniature on top of the rubble in a realistic position. Once I was happy with where the base should go, I glued this into place. By this stage, I had the central lump of scenery, but the rest of the base was pretty bare. To help bulk out the rubble, I decided to cut up some lengths of sprue. I used my clippers to cut up some of the struts into rough brick shapes. These were then trimmed along their edges and corners to create more irregularly shaped pieces of debris. Once I had built up a few of these, I then glued them around the edges of the base. There were a few gaps here and there, so the rubble was great for plugging those up. Now that my base was looking a little fuller, I could think about how my marine would be attached. And that would of course be with even more pinning. I drilled a hole into the back foot and then another into the central rubble pile. I positioned this at a point where I intended to attach the back foot. Into the hole in the base I superglued some more wire and clipped it so that only a few millimetres were left poking out. I intended to paint the Lord separately from the base so this protruding wire would give me somewhere to attach the marine to once I was done. It also made sure that I knew exactly where the miniature would stand, which would be important for the next step. Even though I've alluded to it a few times already, by this point in the build I hadn't actually included any rats yet. So to fix this, I grabbed myself a Skaven Endless Spells Kit. There are a few places to find a lot of individual rats, the Skaven Doom Wheel and Giant Rats for example, but by far the best are those that make up the Vermintide. From the sprue, I removed a few of the rats, but many of these were already attached to the rocks or each other, so I had to very carefully separate a few of these by using a combination of my clippers and my knife. After removing several of these rats, I then set about gluing them to both the base and the Terminator Lord himself. I positioned the rats on the base that they were swarming forwards, and I also glued a few climbing up the back of the Lord as well. When combined with the raised hand, this would create the appearance they were being summoned forth and controlled by the marine himself. Once I was done, I was left with the following base. While most of it had been covered in a rubble or rats, there were a few patches here and there that were pretty featureless. So to fill in these gaps, I used some textured paint. I chose to also use some Vallejo textured paint, but some of the Citadel textures could also be used instead. I painted this into all the remaining gaps which helped to fill out the base and also maintain that urban rubble theme that I had already created. And with that I just needed to paint both the base and the miniature, but before we take a look at the finished model, here's a little bit about Skillshare, the sponsors of this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform that offers you a whole bunch, thousands in fact, of classes that cover a vast range of topics from illustration, design, photography and video to marketing, business analytics and leadership. When I'm not making YouTube videos, I work as a software developer by day and both myself and my colleagues have found the courses offered in web development to be a great help. The JavaScript Toolkit by Chris Harlman is full of useful tips that are presented in an enjoyable format. It has also been invaluable in helping me to brush up on my web development skills and keeping me up to date with the latest practices and technologies. Everything is done at your own pace. There is no pressure to complete classes within a set time frame and there are no ads to interrupt your learning and there are new classes being launched all the time. It's a great way to make use of that extra free time that you may have in a productive way. All this is available for $10 a month when bought as an annual subscription, but the first thousand to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So, back to that conversion. So here we have the completed Terminator Lord of the Homebrew Warband, the Plague Tide. 
I painted the armor as a rusted silver and made extensive use of washes and contrast paints over a metallic base coat to create that corroded and weathered effect. I also added a little OSL to the raised hand and matched this effect to the rat's eyes to further emphasize the Terminator Lord's control over them. Overall, I'm really happy with how this miniature turned out. I think I've managed to keep that link to Nurgle intact without going full on Death Guard. And once again, a big thank you to Evil Anno for giving me the seed of this idea. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Jonathan Hart, Stuart Smith, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Gestag Panzer, Jake, Jeremy Kaup, Jesse Smith, Casper Strand, Iconian Primarch, Merrick, Mr. Grimm, Raphael Beiruthi, Nice OJ, and Swedsman. So, a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliates links. Your help is what allows me to buy the kits required to build these kinds of conversions. And also, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, which has allowed me to run it without any YouTube ads. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.